Hello, and welcome to another pretty basic tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over jumps. I personally like to call them bridges, it just makes more sense to me, going from one area to the next, um, than saying a jump instead of a bridge. So if I, I'll use those terms interchangeably throughout the video, probably. Um, but a jump is more widely the, the common term used for this. Um, so what is a jump. It is basically a way to get close to your target before attacking them to lower your attack send time and it also lowers the chance of you being walled. So let's say I wanted to attack some dude over here and sending my attack would take me 13 minutes. So instead I'd want to contact this guy and be like, hey man, do you mind if I jump through that city to get to this guy? And so instead of attacking, sending a 15 minute attack, I would instead send a 15 minute, or no, 13 minute attack, I guess. I'd send a 13 minute attack to this guy, and then I would send my attack from that city to that city. So this guy won't have the whole 13 minutes to counteract my attack, he'll simply have like maybe one, two minutes at most to move his troops there. So a lot less chance of being walled, you retain a higher troop count throughout the game, it helps you in the long run. There are a few ways to perform a jump. It kind of depends on how ambitious you are, but some of the very easiest jumps are through temples. Now, the problem with this is I could be wanting to get to, uh, let's say, the 75. And to do that, I would want to jump through this temple. Now, the temple is currently held by some other guy. And so, even if I have an agreement with this guy, and I'm sending my troops to that temple, and he won't wall me or counteract me, there's still a chance that this guy or this guy takes that temple before my troops get there and then they uh, counteract me, wall me, snipe me, whatever it may be. And so it's a lot higher risk. People can't hold on to temples as easily as they could hold on to a city to let you bridge through it. So there's a big risk in that. Um, some of the other easier risks, I, there's not that many uh, visual options here for that but I'm trying to find like a neutral city or an inactive city basically if someone goes inactive here I mean this is an example but of course their cities have been taken right but when someone's badge turns gray like this then all their cities will be um, like around them all the cities that they had will turn gray as well which means they're inactive player and so those are decent bridges or jumps because you can send your troops through them and no one's going to wall you. Now, the issue with that, of course, is someone else could take that city in the meantime. It's a bit safer than temple simply because temples anyone could take, but gray cities you're only allowed to take um, whether you've met your city cap for the day, taking X amount of inactive or neutral cities or you're above 30 cities. Um, it kind of varies, I forget which one it is, for the the inactive cities. Of course, early game, there's also a lot of neutral cities. If there's new islands that open up, also a lot more neutral cities that come into play. So those neutral cities that are like the level one lone cat cities that you see all around at the beginning, then those are decent jumps if you're jumping to a new area as well. But again, those could be taken a lot more uh, there's a lot higher chance of them being taken before you arrive, especially with a longer attack, like you know, upwards of 30 minutes. And so there's a bigger risk of being walled in that time. Now, if you want to forego the contact of like reaching out to someone, or maybe you just can't get in contact with them, and you want to get to a certain area, but you don't have anyone that's responding to you and being like, hey man, yeah, you can jump through me. 
then instead you can f try to find an area that has a lower level player which you can still attack. Now, as you see, I'm at 3.47 million KP. And the lowest that I can attack is a person that is, of course, okay, let's restart this real quick. The lowest that I can attack is a person that is 30% of my current KP. So 30% of 3.47 would be 1.04. So let's say 1.1 million. So someone would have to be at least 1.1 million. And I'd preferably want them a few, maybe like five levels below me. Then I know that I can take it. So I haven't actually like looked to find someone. But uh, for the sake of time, let's just say this guy was at yeah okay let's just say this guy he's pink he was at 1.1 million and he conveniently is lower level than me of course so i could send my troops there and even if he tries to wall me i know for a fact that he's going to have much less troops than me so my troop loss taking that city and although i won't gain any experience from the taking the city because it's so low level i'll still be able to take it fairly easily with minimal troop loss before spreading out and being an attack like this guy, this guy, whatever. And so that's another uh, way that you can go about just forcing a bridge instead of actually uh, reaching out to people and taking a bridge. Um, of course, bridges are generally um, agreed upon through like Discord or global chat. Global chat, it increases your risk because if someone kind of knows where you're heading because you can of course like find the player it's like if i was like hey uh fucking kingman in global chat it's like hey kingman can i have a bridge then this guy might be like hey of course they're in the same clan so it doesn't work but this guy might be like hey i'm in that area i know kingman only has a few cities so let me take his cities real quick because i see this guy in global chat saying he wants a bridge and so he'd take like four cities here that King Ben has, these four. Uh, and it's pretty likely that those would be the ones that I bridge it through. So then he gets an easy wall trying to wall me. So that's an issue going about global chat for it. So Discord's a lot more uh, safe in that essence where you could secure it through Discord, be like, hey man, could I have a bridge? You bridge through them and then you go through it. So that's just a word of warning. Um, if you want to be sneaky about it, or let's, let's, let's say that for last actually. So if you want to save time, there's two ways to do it. You could either, and these are about the same risk. You could either send a first attack. It's an 80, it has 126, um, defense. I'm running 200% guard. So if I sent 50 million troops there, it would be a 150 mil attack and I'd be able to take the city. Taking 12 minutes as opposed to 20 minutes. So I send my attack of 50 mil and then I send directly behind it my attack of 500 mil. And so once my attack of 50 mil lands, I will then boost my because you can't boost unless you have the city, of course. I'll then boost my attack behind it of the remaining 450 mil, and then I'll get to that city quicker. And so it gives, uh, it saves me time, but also gives this guy a bit more time to react. So it's like, do you want to save time or do you just want to send your full attack and spend the whole 20 minutes getting there instead of whatever, 15 or whatever it was. So that's something to consider. Another thing to save time Oh, what was it? I'm not 100% sure. Oh, okay. So you could send that. Yeah, let's check. I think that's that's the one way to save time. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Just thinking for a second. So you could do that and just boost your troops behind it. Or you could send all your attacks under 100 mil. So I have this 500 here. So my first would be 5. It would be 50, but then it would go down to 450. 
million troops. So then my second attack, I'd be able to send 90 troops, no, 90 mil. And then I just send multiples of under 100 mil, just slowly gauging it until all my attacks are under 100 mil. And that saves you a little bit of time as well. But if the city gets taken in that time, or this guy decides to be like, hey, I'm actually not going to let you bridge, and he does wall you, then you're going to have lots of small attacks coming in, and you won't get as much golden experience for being walled than as if you had a 50 with a 450 behind it. So that's something to consider as well. Um, lastly, if you do want to bridge to an area that is fairly active, and you want to use the method of sending a small attack and then boosting a larger attack behind it after it lands, you can simply, and you're trying to be stealthy about it, let's say it's a really long attack. So if my map will load, right, let me try to find an area that's far away. Let's say I want to attack this guy and I'm bridging through, I don't know, some other dude. It won't let me actually try to descend an attack for those. So I'll just say I'm attacking directly this guy as a bridge to this guy. Of course, he's my clanmate, so it's not actually effective, but just for the sake of argument, actually. Yeah, I don't want to waste time trying to find a good target. So let's say I'm attacking this guy. Instead of a simple seven minute difference, like the last time where the 50 mil would hit at 13 minutes and the 450 mil would hit at 20. So it's not a huge difference. Instead here, the 50 mil is going to hit at 25 and the 50 mil is going to hit, or the 450 mil would hit at 40 minutes. So after 25 minutes, that's still 15 minutes left. The boost would take five minutes. So this guy, assuming he has troops nearby, would see that I took the city, he'd scout the city, see I only have a low amount of troops in it, because uh, the 50 mil is going to lose most of its value, so it'll be like 10 mil after. So see, I have 10 mil, I just took the city. It's a single city in the middle of nowhere. Why would I have it there? Any reasonable person would say, hey, he is bridging there with a larger amount of troops. Now, he then should realistically take that city, even without any wall experience, because it'll be at like 58 minutes, whatever. And when he takes that city, he'll wall me easily. So what you can do if you're in contact with a friend, like through Discord, let's say, and you're getting a bridge, then I would contact this dude and I would, let's see, yeah, yeah, so I'd contact this dude, and I would coordinate with him, and I would change, I don't necessarily have to change my flag, if I really wanted to be like, really like spy level shit, I would change my flag to the same one he has, but it's not necessary, so I'd coordinate with him, and ask him to take the city back after 10 seconds, like send an attack 10 seconds after my initial attack. And then if I have a lot of troops left over from the initial 50 mil, of course 50 mil isn't taking a 95, but this is just example based. If I have many troops left back from the 50 mil, then I would just suicide those into his other city just to get him out of the way. And then he'd reclaim the city after 10 seconds. But what I would do in that time is I would boost my 450 mil behind it. So I'll take the city with the 50 mil. He'll take it 10 seconds after. But during that 10 seconds, after I move my troops out and like just suicide it, those few troops that are left into a different city of his, then I would boost my 450 mil that was sent behind it. So when this guy, all he'll see is a flicker, if he's even looking in this area, all he'll see is a flicker of my flag and by the time he sees that, this guy would have retaken the city. And so he'll just see that it's at a 59 minute timer and two levels lower. 
And so it might raise some suspicion, but he'd be like, okay, this guy has cities in the area. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to try to take the city. And then I'm going to show up five minutes later with my main stack, my full stack, and then I'll be able to hit him. And it'll be pretty, uh, I don't know, the right, incognito, maybe? Sorry, word. That's a way to like kind of do a stealth bridge. Of course, you can also change the tag to be like super stealthy or even change your name. But I think that costs like gems, so that's not really worth it. So those are the different types of bridges. Kind of not really different types, but different ways to go around getting bridges and uh, completing them. And hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Of course, if you have any um, corrective criticism or like, hey, man, this doesn't work <laughs> or whatever, you know, uh, let me know and I'll try to address that as well. Thank you for watching.